Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're getting into the beauty report for May. I'm going to be recapping my thoughts on the new products that I tried out within the last month. In case you missed uh, my video from Wednesday, I shared that I'm going on a no buy for June and I'm going to be going on a low buy for July and August. Mainly because I realized I have a lot of makeup, a lot of things that are still fairly new. And the main thing that I realized when I was getting ready to film this video is that I really have not taken the time to properly test out some of these new things that I've picked up. And if I want any hope of being able to give you guys some like really good solid reviews, I need to stop buying new things because I need to focus on what I have so I can review it and get back to you guys, like create really cool looks, etc. So I'm going to be sharing today my thoughts on the products that I feel I have used enough to properly review. And then I'll basically highlight the couple of things I'm gonna need to come back to for you guys because I just don't really feel like I'm ready to tell you what I think of them yet. Regardless, uh, we've got a lot to cover today. So with all of that being said, let's get into the products. So the two newest palettes that I picked up, I did film a dedicated video on. They are the new LA Girl limited edition palettes. I have one of the Bright Beam Babe highlighter and bronzer palettes, as well as one of the Hot Hot Heat eyeshadow palettes. The Hot Hot Heat one I have in the um, Aloha Vibes version, which is super colorful and fun. So I did a video testing this out for you guys on camera. I'll throw it up in the cards if you haven't seen it yet. The Bright Beam Babe palette I got in the exhilarating version. So this is the deeper of the two that are available. Uh, I also used this guy in that video too. And my first impressions of these palettes were very positive. I really enjoyed them quite a bit. I felt like the eyeshadows were especially impressive. Each of these palettes retails for $15 and right now you can get them in CVS stores. They're not available online. Although I know Jen from Budiction did just share on her Instagram that it looks like they are printed in the upcoming Ulta flyer. So maybe these guys are coming to Ulta. If that's true, that would be amazing. But if I'm being honest, I've only really had the opportunity to play around with these maybe one or two other times off camera. So I really need to use them more before I feel like I really know them inside and out. I'm planning on doing another palette bingo for you guys in June and I think I want to use this palette because I feel like this is exactly the kind of color story that would be a lot of fun for a palette bingo. So let me know what you think of that if that's a video you guys would be interested in seeing but yeah I'll have to keep you guys posted. My plan is to do like an actual dedicated review of both of these palettes for my blog so there'll be swatches of everything online that you guys can refer back to. So that will definitely be coming your way very soon. Another two palettes that I was testing out in May were from Profusion. I have their Metallics palette and their Spectrum palette. Now, I have used the Metallics palette several times. I don't think I've used every single shade in here in a look yet, but I've used several of them. The Spectrum palette though, again, I really haven't tested out as much as I would like to. So this is another thing that I have on my agenda that I want to actually use in June. I also did a dedicated video testing these guys out that I can link for you in the cards as well. So if you wanna see the look I created with them initially and see my initial thoughts, again, it'll be right up here in the eye. But when I initially used the Spectrum palette, it was kind of hit or miss. I found that these shades didn't really stick to themselves well. They were hard to build up. Some were better than others. So this is again a thing I really need to come back to. But the Metallics palette I feel like is a lot of fun. I mean, for $10, you're getting so many different shades in here. And I feel like, I mean, if you want metallic accents and you don't have a ton of makeup, this will give you a lot to play with without having to spend a lot of money. It's a very messy palette. I find most of the shades in here are very flaky. They're not the easiest to pick up with a brush. They definitely go on best with a finger. But once you get used to the formulas that are in here, once you're more familiar with the palette, it's not as difficult to work with. So yeah, all in all, I feel like this is a really fun palette. I'm glad that I have it. I think it's a really nice affordable option to keep in your collection, especially if you have a lot of neutral matte shades on hand and you just want to add some fun pops of color to the lid again like this is a really nice way to do that without having to shell out you know 
30, 40, 50 dollars for a high-end palette. While we're on the topic of Profusion, I also have been testing out their new Eye Sparklers duos. So each one of these comes with like a cream shadow stick and a liquid glitter eyeshadow that's very similar to the Stila Glittering Glows. And uh, these guys retail for $7 a piece, which is completely insane to me. I have not seen anything from the drugstore that is ultimately this affordable that you're getting this much for because even though like the Koki new crystal aura shadows I think are six dollars you're only getting the shadow you're not also getting the uh, pencil so this to me is like such a good deal and I was blown away by the quality of these they are so good now I have tested so many dupes for the Stila Glitter and Glow liquid eyeshadows. I did a video about them maybe about a year ago. I also did a post over on my blog basically sharing all of my shiny eye products, swatches, which ones I like best, which ones I didn't like. So I will link all that for you guys in the description box if you wanna check them out. But the actual formula in this Profusion shadow is by far the closest I think I've ever come to the Stila's. And really for me, what it comes down to is the actual glitter that's in here. So the Pixie Liquid Fairy Lights, the Flower Beauty Warrior Liquid Shadows, those have glitter in them, but the glitter particles are not as fine as the Stila. They're a little bit more chunky, a little more plasticky. They seem a little bit more cheap. So to me, that kind of makes them feel like a drugstore knockoff and not quite on the same level as the real thing. This guy though has very, very fine micro shimmer in it. And it's got a little bit of a pigmented base. It's just super, super similar uh, look wise to the Stila. So I have two shades. I have Glitz and I have the shade Twinkle. Twinkle is like a dead on dupe for the shade Diamond Dust. It has that same kind of like multi-color prismatic glitter in it. So if you had ever considered picking up Stila Diamond Dust, I mean, save yourself like $15 and just get this instead. I also feel like these adhere pretty well to the eyes. There's not a lot of fallout with them. I've used them on their own and I've also used them like over a glitter primer. A glitter primer will help a little bit, but since these have kind of like a liquid base that they're suspended in, I feel like they hold on to the eyes pretty well all on their own. The only thing you have to be cautious of, and it's the same thing with literally any product in this format, is uh, don't touch your eyes. If you start rubbing your eyes, no matter what you do, glitter is not going to be like locked on there forever. It's not like a smooth like eyeliner or something that dries down and kind of is almost like one with your skin. These are still particles that are adhered on there. So if you scratch your eye, you know, rub at it, you're going to flake them off. You're going to get fallout. So as long as you mostly keep your hands off, I find the fallout situation is not bad. The pencils I also thought were really good, like very pigmented, very creamy. I think the bronze one that comes with the glitz glitter is better than the opal one that comes with the twinkle glitter. That's a dupe for the Stila Diamond Dust. This one to me was kind of patchy not quite as pigmented as this guy. This is like super, super stunning for a bronze eye pencil. I mean, look at that. That's just so nice. So to me, the pencils are just like a bonus. I mean, I would pay $7 for one of these glitters all by itself, but the fact that you get one of these also for the same price is awesome. Like these are excellent to use as a base, or if you just want to do like a really quick, fast and easy eye look, you can put one of these all over the lid and smudge it out with a brush. Boom, you're good to go. So yeah, I definitely highly recommend these. Just a couple things to note though, they don't carry the eye sparklers at every location that Profusion is carried. It's part of their extended collection. So make sure you go on the Profusion website to look up what retailers carry that line before you schlep all the way out there like I did and then end up disappointed. Also, I feel like the shade range on these is not spectacular. It's all pretty neutral and a lot of the shades were very similar. I felt like the Twinkle shade was one of the standouts because of the multicolored glitter that's in here. But if you're looking for something purple, green, blue, like colorful and interesting, you're not gonna find them in these eye sparklers right now. Here's to hoping they'll be popular and Profusion will release more colors. 
but for now you're pretty much just gonna be getting like bronzy champagne tones. Another thing I did in this last month that I want to start doing more regularly is BoxyCharm unboxings and try-ons. Uh, every three months I get a Boxy Lux box which comes with a lot of stuff. Uh, I will be doing an unboxing of the June Boxy Lux. I don't know how much I'm gonna actually try on it in that video otherwise it might be super long but in the months that I do get just like a regular BoxyCharm box I would like to start reviewing them, trying them on for you guys, creating some looks, having some fun because I know a lot of you also are BoxyCharm subscribers. And from the May box there were two particular products that really stood out to me that I am seriously in love with and those are the Almar Cosmetics Colorect Blush Trio and this Ciate Eye Luster Cream Shadow. I honestly have reached for these both numerous times in the last couple of weeks because they both are so beautiful. The blush palette I have in the Fair Light variety, which I feel like is just a little on the light side for my skin tone, especially now that it's warming up. I'm starting to go outside and get some sun. I'm gonna get even more tan than I already am, so I would have preferred to get the medium version, but alas, I'm not gonna complain. This middle shade here, Pariso, is so beautiful on the cheeks. It's just a really natural, very dusty pink color. It's not too in your face. It doesn't look too vibrant. It blends out really easily. So I seriously have been loving using this. Scorcher is also a really pretty shade, but it has a pretty intense glow. So this is the kind of blush I found that if I'm gonna use it, I'm almost like not gonna use a highlight. I'll just go into the bronzer and then put this all over the cheeks because it has so much reflect to it naturally. I feel like excess highlight isn't really necessary. And then the shade Castaway is pretty much just like a straight up highlight on my skin tone. It's a little bit too reflective and too glowy for me to use it just as a blush, like it doesn't impart that much color. But again, depending on the kind of look you're going for, like if you had super bronzed cheeks to begin with, going in with this without a highlight and just putting it kind of on the apples and the high points of the cheekbones would give a really pretty glowy, apricotty effect. Like the whole palette's really beautiful. I love the tones that Gabby picked for this palette. And the actual formula is stunning. Super soft, blendable, easy to work with. I just absolutely love it. Not to mention the fact that the packaging is cute. It's very sleek, small, super travel friendly. So definitely 100% loving this. And then this guy like came out of nowhere. When I saw that this was coming in the box, I wasn't super excited about it. Even though I love shimmery, uh, glittery liquid eyeshadows, a lot of them are very disappointing. This guy though is like unbelievably stunning. So I got the shade Cupid, which is a like lilac purple with a really strong gold um, shift to it. To be honest, on the eyes, I find it looks more gold than anything else. And the way I've been really enjoying wearing this is I'll go into the crease and just blend in some matte transition shades, then apply this to the lid and just kind of like tap it out with my fingers to blend it. And when you do that, it just creates the most beautiful, sparkly, ethereal kind of finish on your eyes. It's like true pixie dust vibes. And I feel like it just gives the prettiest effect. Like you could still wear it in the daytime and not feel like you were looking crazy, but like if you just wanted to amp up a look from day to night for going out and have that glittery glam, really you just tap like the tiniest bit of this right on the center of the lid and you get all this gorgeous shiny gold reflect. Now I don't feel like I need to go out and buy more of these. I'm not even sure how many more colors there are. Just having the one is perfect for my collection, but I am super stoked to have received this in a boxy charm. Like that box was worth way more than the $21 that I paid for it. Just these two products right here is more than a $40 value, so basically twice what I paid for the entire box, and they were incredible, 100% worth it. And then we have all the products that I picked up from Sephora during their spring sale. I did do like a whole try-on haul style video, so you guys can watch that if you wanna see all these products in action. But for the most part, I am really happy with everything that I picked up. I think that I am hands down most impressed by the peach products from too Faced that I picked up. This whole line is so good and I've been sleeping on it for the last, what, year and a half? So I have the setting spray, the primer, and the Peach Perfect setting powder and all three of them 
are wonderful and used together I feel like they make your skin look super airbrushed matte but not like dry and cakey like they are super nice i think if i had to pick my least favorite it would be the primer this is really nice i enjoy it a lot but i don't think it's super special the texture is interesting it's silicone and whipped kind of like benefit professional but as you're massaging it into the skin, it almost has this weird watery feeling and it's cooling. So it's unique and interesting in that respect. But as far as the like finish and what it actually does for your skin, it's a pore filling primer. So it kind of performs just like any silicone based pore filling primer. I didn't find that using this necessarily made my skin extra matte compared to using another similar primer. So for me, it's like, I like it. I like the smell. I like the way that it feels but there are also a lot of other things out there similar to this. These guys though, I feel like are a little bit more unique, a little bit more uh, revolutionary to my makeup game. The powder is addictive because it smells good. It almost like tastes good. It's got like a sweetener in it, which is very weird. But when you're applying it and you have that like cloud of powder around your face, you can like taste it in the air. It really airbrushes your skin and makes it look super smooth. And it mattifies, but not in like a dry cakey way. There's not shimmer in here. It's not luminous, but I feel like at the same time, there's almost like a micro fine luminosity to it that just makes your skin look a little bit more satiny than flat and matte. And it's just like ever so slightly peachy tinted, which on my skin tone, I don't mind. It does sort of darken up my foundation and concealer like a teeny tiny little bit. But since I'm transitioning right now from winter into spring, summer, my foundations and concealers are often a little bit too light for me. I'm kind of not quite dark enough for my summer shades. I'm like in that weird in-between phase right now. So I actually kind of like having a powder that helps my face to match my neck better. So yeah, this is something that I've just been kind of mildly obsessed with. I've been trying to force myself to use other things because I'm trying to go through some other powders. But if I let myself, like this is what I would probably reach for on the daily. And then this guy has uh, quickly become my new favorite setting spray. Like I didn't really understand or appreciate how much I needed setting spray until I got this guy. So a couple of things to note about this spray. You can hear there's like the little metal mixer balls in the bottom of this. Entirely necessary because if you do not shake this up really well, it's gonna leave white spots on your face. It's only happened to me once in the many times that I've used this and it was because I think I was lazy with shaking the bottle. Like you need to give it a solid 10 seconds. 10 seconds is a lot longer than you think that it is. But if you don't shake it up well, all the like silica particles sink to the bottom and then that's what gets sucked up into the sprayer and it kind of just leaves little white dots all over your skin. So if you uh, follow the directions and shake it as it asks you to right on the cap, this stuff just has a way of melting your makeup in and locking it in place all day and controlling shine that is unlike any other setting spray I've tried. And if you saw my makeup inventory video that I just did, I have 12 setting sprays right now and I've tried more than what I have on hand. So this for me definitely feels like for it to stand out amongst the ranks, like it's gotta be something special. The mist on here I will say is quite heavy. It does put a lot of spray onto your face, but I find it doesn't ruin your makeup even when it does that. In a weird way, it's kind of like, it puts on an even layer even though it's a heavy layer and it does kind of wet your whole face, but it dries fairly quickly. And once it does, your makeup just looks like skin. It just looks less powdery. Everything looks really melded and blended together. And then it just stays that way for like, 12 hours. Now obviously the combination of your primer, your moisturizer, your foundation, etc. Like they're all gonna play a part in how your makeup looks by the end of the day. But when I use this with my favorite mattifying foundations, mattifying powders, etc. Like the things I normally would use to help control shine because I'm very very oily. If I set my face with this, 
I notice my skin stays matte longer than it would if I didn't use it. So yeah, I am like 100% a believer in this guy. I really, really enjoy it. I'm so glad that I decided to pick up the full size while I could get it on sale. And I have a feeling it's going to come in super handy this entire summer when I, you know, normally look like an oily mess. Then the next product from my Sephora haul was this Ren Clean Screen Mineral SPF 30. And this I'm kind of on the fence about. I was really excited to try it because it says it's a mattifying face sunscreen. It's all mineral. It uses 22% zinc oxide as the SPF in here, and it doesn't have any silicone. So I saw all these things. I saw all the great fruit enzymes and extracts, and immediately I was like, ooh, I need to try that. That sounds like an amazing sunscreen. If you've got oily skin, you understand the struggle with SPF. So many of them just make you feel like a greasy hot mess and it's really uncomfortable. Unfortunately, I feel like this ended up being a pretty greasy feeling sunscreen. It goes on as a white lotion. You guys can see in the try on haul video me applying this on my face and it definitely leaves a bit of a white cast. I felt like my skin looked kind of purple, kind of gray after I put it on. It smells nice. It doesn't smell like a traditional sunscreen. It doesn't smell like chemicals. It kind of smells like fruit. And it wasn't difficult to rub in. Like there are some mineral sunscreens I've tried that are very chalky and I wouldn't say that this is one of them, but it left my skin very luminous and dewy looking. And when I heard mattifying, I was thinking it was going to leave my skin matte and that is definitely not the case. If you want a truly matte finish sunscreen, the Coats one, their tinted face sunscreen, that one does have a silicone base and it goes on pretty much exactly like a face primer. It's very smoothing and pore filling and it leaves your skin super matte. So I've been enjoying wearing that one more under makeup just because I feel like it kind of is a two-in-one for me. It's a sunscreen and primer all in one product and I don't have to add as many layers of stuff to my skin. This I can wear under makeup and I didn't feel like it necessarily broke my foundation apart. I maybe got a little more shiny with this than I would with like the Coats sunscreen, but I wouldn't say that it was like a super drastic difference to the point where I felt like I would need to avoid wearing this on days where I wanted to put makeup on. So yeah, I have a feeling this is going to be more of my new like beach sunscreen, pool sunscreen, the days where I'm not gonna be wearing makeup and I don't really care what my face looks like and I care more just about having the SPF on. I haven't gotten a chance to like really put this to a proper test in intense sun because I just haven't been out enough in the sun like I've been out for walks you know whatnot during the day but I haven't like been sitting in the sun for eight hours so yeah I will be curious to see how this works this summer once I have a chance to like really put it to the SPF test but as far as texture goes it's like not exactly what I hoped it was going to be. Finally, my last two products are adorable and green. I have the Laneige Glowy Lip Balm and then the Herbivore Emerald Cannabis Sativa Deep Moisture Glow Oil. So why don't we start out with the oil. Uh, this little guy here, I actually am really enjoying. I don't hate facial oils, but I can't say that I've ever made them like a very regular part of my skincare routine. And most of the reason for that is I'm oily. I only like to use them at night because usually during the day they just are a little bit too much for my skin. And even then, certain oils are too heavy and if I use them on any kind of regular basis, they start to clog my pores. This guy though is super lightweight, non-comedogenic. I feel like if I apply this at night, when I wake up in the morning, my skin feels almost matte. Like it doesn't feel greasy at all, but it feels very smooth and supple. So that says to me, like while I'm sleeping, this does a really great job of sinking in. I've definitely noticed that my skin has been a little bit less red. I haven't really had any issues with breakouts in the last couple of months. And I feel like this has definitely helped kind of keep things sort of nice and calm. So yeah, I'm really glad that I picked up this sample and got the chance to try out this little mini size. A little goes a long way. I only need to use maybe like four drops or so to cover my entire face. And I'm really curious about the version of this that has the actual CBD oil in it. I think if I was to purchase the full size, I would probably get that one. Like this is good, but it just has the cannabis sativa seed oil. It doesn't have the CBD in it as well. And the CBD I feel like is what's supposed to really have like the best benefits for skin. So maybe this fall, winter, maybe more towards Christmas time, the next time Sephora is having a sale, I'll think about picking that guy up. But yeah, in the meantime, enjoying using this. And uh, if you're super oily like me, this is a really nice 
facial oil option. Finally, we got this guy, the ever popular Laneige Lip Glowy Balm. This is really nice. I definitely enjoy it, but I also kind of feel like it's a little bit overhyped for what it is. It's a lip balm. It's very glossy. It looks really pretty on the lips. It feels good. They smell really nice. I have the pear version. It's pretty delicious, but I don't think it's like as revolutionary as the original lip sleeping mask. I think that one is still my favorite. And if you wanted to splurge on a lip product for the extra $5, I feel like the sleeping lip mask is worth the extra money. I like that this guy is more purse friendly. I've had it with me in my purse for the last couple of weeks and I've been reaching for it a ton. So I definitely don't have like regrets about buying this. I think it's a really nice product. I just don't feel like it does anything so super special for my lips that like I would recommend it over the original. All right guys, so that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed hearing all of my thoughts on these products. Definitely leave a comment down below and let me know if you've tried any of these things, what you think of them. And also, if you want me to create any more content with any of these products, if the ones that I really haven't had a chance to fully test out and review yet are interesting to you and you want to hear more of my thoughts on them, let me know that too. And yeah, I am really excited for June. I've got some really fun videos coming your way. I uh, just filmed a video creating this look and I'm super excited about it. I basically went through my single eyeshadow collection and recreated a palette that I've been very tempted to buy and since I'm on a no buy, I'm not gonna get it. So hang tight, that will be coming your way next week, I believe. And I've got my Nabla Try On haul coming tomorrow. Everyday makeup drawer is gonna be coming on Monday. So lots of good stuff coming your way very soon. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. And yeah, on that note, I hope you guys have a wonderful Friday, rest of your weekend, and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Bye guys.